And our guest to open up this Friday morning is Clint Hogbin, chairman of the Solid Waste Authority. Clint, welcome back. Good to have you. Good to be here. Thank you for the invitation. And I didn't realize there was a dress code or I would yeah. have wore the, the same Well, you're wearing blue. Uh, close, as close yeah. as I'm going to get, apparently. <laughs> Which puts me outside the circle here this morning. We're, we are talking about dress code, are we? We are. <laughs> we, are we are. We are. Yeah. Uh, Clint, uh, we've got a lot of things to get to, uh, not the least of which is uh, the work that you folks do in the community with recycling uh, paper drives, uh, all mm -hmm. sorts of things that uh, you open up to the public and allow them to get rid of some stuff that otherwise might wind up in the dump, which doesn't have necessarily have to go there. Right. Berkeley County, I think maybe a few folks realize this, but Berkeley County runs the largest recycling program in the state of West Virginia. We routinely, I, I didn't know that. We yeah. routinely collect um, annually about 12 million pounds of material, which is 6,000 tons. And as I compare that to the state's solid waste plan and look across the state, I see that uh, our, our numbers here in Berkeley County exceed not only all other, all other counties, but exceed in some cases a collection of regions of the state. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, hats off to the citizens. Uh, yeah, yeah, we offer the services, but, and, uh, but that wouldn't, you know, we wouldn't exist if it wasn't for the turnout that the public brings us. You had a drive just this past week, did you not? We did. We had uh, uh, our fall paper shred event, uh, which is something we've done for many years. We do one in the spring at the Grapevine Road Center. We did the fall one down at the South Berkeley Center uh, in Inwood. Uh, we team up with a private company. This one's all shred. And uh, they bring a truck on site, and for three hours we offer uh, paper shredding. Um, they are right in front of the customer for free. Do you add up the poundage uh, that is uh, shredded during we, these drives? We do. Uh, actually, all, all shred does, and they, and, uh, they, they provided a, a number of 9,650 pounds at that last event. I think our last event may have been a record. We, we don't keep... Um, specific records of uh, participation of that event. We had 128 vehicles in three hours. Mr. Stubblefield was one of them. I will point out he was the only one that arrived with money in hand. <laughs> I thought we were supposed to pay. <laughs> he just kept trying to give me money. Well, I thought Bill was shredding some of his money. The bills weren't crisp enough anymore. <laughs> no, no one else did that. Uh, no, no one else showed up with money in hand. So uh, anyway, yeah, we had 128 vehicles in that three hours. They were there about an hour before we opened, uh, waiting in line and. Um, we we'll have to keep an eye on that because it, you know, our participation in our programs kind of uh, came down a little bit during COVID, and that may be the first hint that we're over that, and we'll see, uh, you know, increase, uh, which we typically see from one year to the next if we're going to see more. Can you generate revenue out of any of the items that you're recycling? Well, we do. Uh, not a lot of them. There's about 20, 22 items that we take at the recycling centers. Scrap metal uh, clearly is something that brings us twenty, thirty thousand dollars a year. Um, we uh, steel cans is another, again, another metal that brings us revenue. Um, we charge for electronics, and with the fee we charge plus some grant money, we're able to break even there. Brush is by far the the by weight the largest item we take, and we charge for brush. Um, a $10 fee for a pickup load. It's very reasonable, I think. And we also charge for Freon removal of yeah. our, and our appliances that have that. So with all the, you know, with the commodity market, uh, we, we do, I should also mention that just started uh, this spring, cardboard and mixed paper started paying again. Uh, we, we, for several years, during the COVID years, um, it was costing us $20,000, $30,000 to market th that material but um we uh we are now uh turning the cover turning um turning the i'll, I'll get it out we're, we're now being paid for that material um and and it exceeds the cost that we have in it so uh that's going to turn into a re another revenue source for us again bill do you see the influence you just had on clint a perfectly <laughs> well-spoken young man who Suddenly now can't complete sentences. I was hoping you'd give me credit for influence in other arenas besides <laughs> murdering the Queen's English. <laughs> uh, you're up, Admiral. Okay. Yeah, Clint, congratulations on, on this successful shredding. Uh, uh, recycling is kind of a two-headed uh, uh, 
animal, is it not? One, getting folks to volunteer, bring the stuff in, but also being able to find a a depository for a lot of the uh, stuff. You've gone through various cycles of having trouble finding some place to dispose of. Right. Uh, the markets for recycling are, are very regional, and yeah. something that we could recycle here easily uh, may be impossible 50 miles away, and, and vice versa. Uh, it's it's a sad, it's a shame it's that way, Bill. I mean, you know, I would wish that on the national level we would develop our inf- recycling infrastructure to where it was more standardized. But uh, you know, I, when I go to solid waste conferences across West Virginia and and I, you know, talk a little bit about our program, they're in awe that we can pull that we can recycle compact fluorescent lights and, and things like that that they never even they're just struggling along just trying to get metals. Yeah, uh, and now, affordably recycled. Now you do collect plastics, uh, but yeah. what about the plastic bags we get at the grocery stores? That's an easy one in this area. You can uh, you can recycle. We that? take them uh, all day long at both uh, recycling centers. The world's largest recycler of plastic bags, again regional situation, is in Winchester, Virginia. Mm-hmm. It is Trex, and we. Uh, huh. we so we we they, you know, where they make uh, lumber. I have uh, Trex decking. Yes. Okay, and uh, it's made out of plastic bags, recycled plastic bags, and they have a aggressive program to work with uh, community-based programs where they will pay. They will sometimes donate the lumber and things like that. Have you always collected plastic bags? Yeah, we I have. was thinking you had not so. for decades. Okay. Um, yeah. So um, what we do there is we've got a partnership. Trex only accepts plastic bags in the bale. And we don't have any bailing uh, capabilities. So we team up with the Martinsburg Rescue Mission. They do the bailing for us. And then we split the revenues, or maybe sure. in some cases we give, give them the entire revenue depending on the commodity market. So the, the, the rescue mission benefits from it. The community benefits from the service. And, uh, and, and again, that's a situation that's kind of an easy one to yeah. do okay. for, in this area. Now, you have an event coming up this coming weekend? It's not this Saturday, not tomorrow. It's the following Saturday. Okay. This is uh, our very, very, very popular tire collection event. Uh, we do two a year. Um, this will be at the South Berkeley Recycling Center from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, a contractor comes in, and they'll set up about five to six tractor trailers, and we will fill them. I expect if it's a normal event, the weather's reasonable, um, we'll do 5,000 tires that day. And the restrictions are what? Yeah, so you got to be a West Virginia resident. I'm going to be there at the gate, and I'm going to ask for your driver's license. So be prepared for that. Have your driver's license out. I don't care what county you're from. People will show up from Hampshire County, believe it or not, and that's perfectly fine. Um, show us your driver's license. That, that'll get you 10 free tires um that that driver's license and that's uh, again let me stress that it's per driver's license so if you've got a spouse in the car with you that gets you 20. um so um if you if the truck in front of you has 20 and you uh, you're upset because you thought the rule was only 10 it's actually 10 per per driver's license now the tires have to be off of the rim well, we prefer them off the rim, but the truth is we will take them either way. The, yeah, the, the rim's recyclable, too. The, exactly. Yeah. It, it does take equipment to get the rim off of uh, the tire, so the tire vendor will take them. The state does pay for them, but they prefer it off the rim. And the tires go where? Yeah, so there is a monofill um, in the state of West Virginia, mono meaning one, landfill, monofill for just tires. And uh, it's in the middle of the state, and um, it was set up back in the 1990s. The um, the tire monofill gets all of the st- all of the tires from the tire collection events across the state. Can you tell your river story about uh, collecting tires? You told before we well, went on the air. Absolutely. Um, so we also run a stream cleanup program. It's it's uh, something we do with some um, young folks. They're usually high school students, and they. Um, uh, they, uh, I, I take my Saturday every Saturday I have for many, many years and, and go out with them and we climb into the Apecan Creek or Back Creek or Sleepy Creek Lake. And we've wondered over the years if there was any way we could partner up with uh, an organization out of Maryland and, and do the Potomac River. And believe me, that's a whole different 
problem approach that you would use to to do a, a large river versus a small creek. But next, uh, you're talking about the shallow part of the Potomac River as opposed to the right. Deep water. You get behind a dam, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can you can do the shorelines yeah, or something, yeah. but that's about yeah. it. But uh, we were we were approached by an organization called the Creek Cleanup Project. They're a nonprofit group out of Washington County and Franklin County, Pennsylvania. Um, they had been advised of a large deposit of tires that was hung up on islands uh, in, and it was best access from the West Virginia side. So if you're familiar with Sleepy Creek, the actual creek that where, and where it discharges into the Potomac, that's about where these islands start and they stretch over a mile or, or so downstream. The uh, creek cleanup folks um, had 12 volunteers they went into the Potomac River and they pulled out, uh, no kidding, 173 tires and a few bags of trash and about 35 bulk, other bulky items. And, uh, and so... Um, how, our, long of, how long of a stretch of river was that? Less than a mile. Less than a mile. Wow. So, yeah, those unbelievable numbers. Uh, so, you know, with the lack of rain, that's brought us some opportunities, both in the creeks and in the river, where we got some low water that we maybe normally wouldn't. And we very quickly teamed up with that group, got those tires out of there for the rains came. And um, uh, the Sol Berkeley County Solid Waste Authority was, uh, we received those tires. We incorporated as part of our creek cleanup uh, disposal methods and um and keep in mind if we didn't do that this nonprofit group would have had to pay for disposal of those tires which i think is a shame considering what they're already doing but um is there any other explanation for those tires being in the river other than somebody threw them in there well i'm not even sure i want to say somebody the vast majority of those tires rob were tractor trailer tires uh, probably 150 of the 173 were tractor trailer and, and you take a tractor trailer tire you fill it with mud and go slinging it. You're gonna, you know, it's heavy. Uh, those fo uh, those folks really, the, the work they did was very admirable. How they, and they were historical tires, most of them. They were legacy tires. They weren't something new. A few were, but they, they were something that'd been there a long time. We think floodwaters earlier this year probably picked them up, moved them to those islands where the islands act like a dam and, and when the water went down, we could people started c commenting that look at all those tires, and and those comments made their way to us. Uh, Clint, you mentioned a couple minutes ago about the a single depositor or landfill for tires in the state. There had been discussion with a cement plant over the years yeah. of utilizing the tires as a source of fuel. Is there still any discussion? Along those means, or do you know? not that not that I'm aware of. Um, uh, those discussions tended to happen back in that 1990s era, yeah. where there was a lot of discussion on solid waste yeah. in West Virginia. They certainly um, other states do not landfill tires. They have methods for using them for energy uh, or recycle them. Uh, West Virginia settled into these tire monofill concept. It was uh, a battle that I fought and lost. And because uh, I, I really felt we missed an opportunity that some of these tires, not not all of them for sure, some have to go to a landfill, but we missed an opportunity to uh, to, um, you know, create jobs and do all the things that uh, we could have done, you know, had we went a step further and implemented some recycling with those is, tires. Is there still a market for people to take their scrap metal and such to commercial scrap recyclers and get paid for it? Absolutely. And, In this area, absolutely there is, John. Yeah. And... And, and do you, when people bring scrap metal to you, do they get paid for it? They do not. It's they 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 they're they're donating it. So there's folks that won't bring it to us for that right. reason. They they want to be paid for it, and that's okay. They, yeah, and they, recycling they, is they, recycling. They, so it would be and where they go with it. The the benefit uh, from our perspective is we use that money to do more than mm -hmm. just metals. We're going to do plastic. We're we're going to do paper. We're going to do glass. We're going to do yard waste. We're going to do, you know, a lot of other items that re, uh, a, a scrap yard's not going to do. We're going to do stream cleanup programs. We're going to do shred events. We're going to do tire collection events. And, and that funds, right. uh, that scrap metal funds those type, helps fund those type of programs. What can people do for the secure recycling or disposal of electronics, th those old computers, the old hard drives and such well great question uh so berkeley county has 
uh, as part of our recycling program, we accept electronics every day. Uh, we take TVs, we take computers, um, and in fact, we have a bulky good collection event coming up in a couple weeks. I'll look at my notes here, October the 5th uh, at the South Berkeley Center, and we will take mattresses and, and f old furniture, and in addition to that, we will take our electronics, we will take them for free that day. Um, and we've been taking electronics um, since 2010. Then uh, what happens to an old laptop that has... You know, a lot of financial data and that kind of stuff. Right, exactly, right. Uh, and that is a concern. We we uh, we do nothing with data protection. So okay. if that's important to you, do not bring it to the Berkeley County Recycling Program. What should one do? Well, um, it depends on what was on the item, in my view. I mean, if if you've got an, an item that you know a, a computer that's got um, personal information that you're uncomfortable with. I'm technical enough. I'm going to open it up, pull the memory cards out, pull the hard drive out, and uh, and I'm going to keep those for a day and take them to a place that does that type of destruction. Mm -hmm. um, if, who would that be, Clint? Well, um, All Shred uh, okay. is a company that uh, an example of a company that uh, is, has that kind of certification. How about the uh, computer uh, repair stores? Would they uh, clean a uh, hard drive hard drive for you, or do you know? Um, Yes, yeah, some of them do data wiping. Um, computer repair stores are kind of a thing of the past, though. I mean, they're they're dwindling. Uh, people don't fix their computers; they toss it away and buy and buy a new one. Um, so, um, for some people it matters, some it doesn't. The um, the company that we're using, which is north of Ch of Cumberland, Maryland, they uh, first the first step of their process is shredding. So if you do leave a hard drive in or a memory stick or whatever, it's going to get shredded on the first, you know, as it enters the door of that place. However, you're going to leave it at a recycling center, yeah. and it's going to be trucked there. And in, in the meantime, there will be very little efforts to protect data integrity. So, you know, it's your decision. We, are, uh, we fill two tractor trailers a month of electronics. Um, um, and, uh, and I don't see that getting any smaller in volume. However, I do see it getting substantially lighter in weight. Also, a question about paper. In, now that paper and fiber is, is, is getting value again, is it important that it be clean, that it be free of any food? Like oh, absolutely. Pi pizza yeah. boxes are, yeah. are not valuable. So we separate our paper, cardboard into one tractor trailer, all other forms of paper, what we, which we term mixed paper, in, mm -hmm. into another trailer. Uh, and, and you're exactly right. Please don't bring us, you know, something that's uh, yucky. Uh, now, a pizza box that isn't yucky is perfectly recyclable. Yeah. But if it, it's got a lot of grease on it from the cheese or whatever, just it's, please, you know, you're, you're going to, you know, hurt a program that's going to market, you know, 50 tractor trailers a year for your pizza box. Don't, don't do that. Don't risk our program. Clint, in the, la in the couple minutes you have left, what about in Sauger? Except yeah, that. so Insorga is an ongoing effort uh, by primarily Apple Valley and the Solid Waste Authority. Uh, there is some good news there to report that starting in July, Apple Valley started paying uh, lease revenue to the Solid Waste Authority. About, I'm going to say about 75% of what we were used to. Uh, when and, Insorga was operating. And they're using it for what now? Well, right now they're, they're not using the facility. It's, it's setting, setting empty as they continue to try to con, uh, convert the permits from Insorga, the company Insorga, to Apple Valley. And the, the, the path to do that has been exceedingly long and difficult and not clear. Uh, and I know they work it every day. I spent four hours two weeks ago there at the site with them and another company, um, uh, you know, on, that, on this very topic. It's, it's an active process. It's just been exceedingly more difficult than I ever imagined. The site has been cleaned up, has it? It no. has, uh, primarily uh, Apple Valley. I'm very, very grateful that they removed uh, nearly all of the trash out of the building. There are some pits they're concrete pits that there's still trash in, but that trash is stabilized. It's, there's, there's little risk of that, um, you know, uh, catching on fire or, or, be, or being a health I issue to anyone. Um, and, uh, and they have modified the insides of the building a little bit to use it for uh, 
uh, what the average person would call a transfer station kind of sure. concept. Uh, and they're just waiting on, uh, you know, Charleston to sort of catch up to what they're what they're trying to do there. But the intent, hopefully, would be go to the original concept of a, 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 a fuel development. Yeah, go back to making man, uh, fuel manufacturing yeah. out of out of trash. Clint, I have a question in regards to shredding events. Yeah. If I show up with shredded paper and documents, can I still drop it off during a shredding event? You don't need to wait to a shredding event. If it's already shredded, just bring it to our recycling program any day and dump it in the mixed paper. Just unload it. If you carry it in a bag, dump, dump it out of the bag. If it's in a cardboard box, dump it out of the cardboard box. Right in with all the other material, and it's perfectly acceptable. Uh, is, uh, is Mr. Stubblefield and his litter grant responsible for any of the work that you're doing with litter? Uh, well, yes. Uh, I mean, the, litter, the roadside litter program, um, which you know, goes out very actively these days, goes out with a vacuum cleaner. Uh, literally, I don't know how else to describe it. It's a large tow-behind unit with a hose that big around, and it sucks litter out of the trash. Berkeley Community Pride, I think, paid for that vacuum cleaner. Yes. Um, uh, in their final days, they have since uh, abolished, uh, but they paid for that vacuum cleaner, and I have seen the amount of litter that is collected in an eight-hour day substantially increase since the implementation of that uh, that vacuum. That vacuum was uh, evaluated by several different groups. Of Clint was very active in the evaluation and selection of this particular vacuum. And yeah, it does work. It's, it's maybe this tells telling about me some, but I enjoyed running the vacuum cleaner <laughs> along, <laughs> along yeah, yeah, the roads. Yeah. For some reason, I found it fun to do. But yeah. again, maybe that tells you something and, about me. Well, and, and it, it works quite well. There is a, a, a human factor. There's a workforce that's required with it. It's provided mm -hmm by the county uh i hopefully would like to see additional vacuums alongside the road so well bill thank you for your generosity once mm -hmm. again sir and i do notice less trash on the roads do you really i do uh, i'm surprised to hear you say that because i think i see more all the time but uh, well, i hope you're right shame. i hope the, you're right the routes that i travel i see less trash than 10 years ago awesome Awesome. Which I hope we can, if that's, maybe it's just me, but I no, hope we I, continue I, that. I incline, I agree with you, Rob. I think there's less trash. Very good. Well, it, it, yeah, maybe I'm too close to the weeds. Maybe that's why I see it, so to speak. But uh, you're not the first to say that to me, that there is less out there. Well, that's good. People. We're you, still a dirty county as far as roads go, though. Absolutely. We have a long way to go, but it is improving. Take pride in your community. Don't litter it. That's right. Clint, thank you for being here. Thank you for the invitation. I appreciate it. Always good to visit with you at... Uh, 8.31, we break. 